we can go to next question Vishnu. Yes, sir. The next question is, uh, can we automate the migration process? What tools to use and uh, how do we do it? So the tools, uh, I have not seen any tools uh, uh, given by IIP uh, or IPM. So in case of uh, 10 to 11 uh, migration, I've seen one command uh, being provided to us, you could maybe call that as a tool. So that is a, a tool which helps in dockerization. So 10 is, uh, has one broker and multiple execution groups. And in case of 11, you can have independent execution groups. So to check if uh, it's a suitable for this new architecture. What's a new architecture? In 10, you have a file system that you can depend on uh, and you know the file system will not change. The files that you put on the uh, file system and the broker that you have are on one server and you are bound to it. So in case of 11, if you containerize it, that uh, the file system is not no longer bound to the actual server that is uh, running on it because Docker can have a layered file system that you can mount, you can dismount, and you can have uh, the same uh, code running on multiple Docker instances, or you can kill one of the Docker instance and uh, start a new instance. And you don't want the data to be lost when you kill an instance of your code. So these kind of situations, uh, you cannot use a file input node, okay? The file input node has to be uh, linked up uh, to the option called SFTP or FTP. So it has to be the file transfer has to be remote. It, it should not be local. So that is the difference between 10 and 11. So if you're using a file input node in a local setting, then that tool would tell you that you have to uh, make the changes to that file input node such that it takes in a remote file. So I'm trying to recall the name of the, the tool. Uh, and also we are using uh, planning to use APIs, API features in IIB 11. So we wanted to have some tool which can uh, easily migrate and quickly migrate the flows and projects. If you are time bound, then uh, you can import the code into your toolkit and create, uh, so importing multiple projects into your uh, IIB 11 toolkit has to be done manually. And you'll have to commit your code into uh, your version control system. This would be a one day task or a one week task for a person based on the number of projects that you have. Just import and then commit the code. So- no, But we, that, we, we may not be able to uh, make use of uh, uh, creating APIs and then making uh, use of the latest features of the uh, later yes. version of the tools. So we yes. don't want to do that either. We want both to be positively done, uh, but within a stipulated time, it doesn't mean that in a month of time, but we have to decide and uh, uh, discover a possible tool that I, I believe there must be some open source tools or uh, some of the other projects they might have used to migrate their uh, uh, earlier versions to the latest versions of the IIB, right? See, if you want to use the features, then you'll have to spend time in redevelopment. Redevelopment cannot be done by an automated tool. Okay, okay. Got it. Yeah, yeah. understood uh, in, in a broader way. Cool. But uh, I was not able to find it. Okay, I, I think I have made a video on this. I'm not able to recall the name. So uh, what happens in that case is it, it finally it will create, give you a HTML file. And within that HTML file, you will see uh, what are the changes that you have to do, uh, such as a file input node has to be changed and uh, you will have to uh, publish to a different topic or something like that. What the features that's available in seven, which are not supported in, which are not, which are, which are not supposed to use in 11, those kind of uh, check marks you will get. And then you know, based on that, you can modify your code uh, to 11.
okay so that's one the, one of the tools uh, that you have uh, that you get with the ec uh, tool can you use that next uh, what are the other tool you will have to uh, when uh, migrating from one version to the other you will need to do some sort of a testing and, and it is better if you do ha have it in automated way uh, and some one of automation tools that i have uh, worked with in the past is rational integration tester so if your project does not have automation testing in any other uh, tool such as hpqc or eggplant or anything else then you can go for this this is a uh, census is uh, made available to you by ibm it has a good uh, integration with uh, ibm tools such as data power and uh, ibm iib ibm ac ibm uh, wmb so this can be used for creating your automation test so you will have to create a test uh, since you don't have any test in uh, seven, you will have to create the test, capture the uh, input and output, and then again after you do the migration, you will have to test it again in uh, eleven to look at the outputs. Uh, so, is this open source tool, Vishnu? RIT? No, it is given to you by IBM. You will have to. It is a licensed product. Okay, RIT is Rational Integration Tester, right? Yes, you can use any kind of a testing tool. I'm I'm suggesting IBM RIT because it is uh, it works well with IIP and data power. Okay. So when you do your migration, testing is a big factor. Crucial part. Yes. And other testing option that you have, testing has to be automated to some extent, whatever it is uh, you can do it because you will have, when you're migrating from one motion to the other, it is not one project, it is multiple, it is hundreds of projects that you want to migrate. So testing, if you have some sort of an automated way of testing it, would help you a lot. So the other uh, automated testing option that you can do is in-house, uh, you can build some sort of a testing tool. So what do you want to check in this case? You will run some input on version 7 and you want to check if the same output is generated in version 11. So you have your input data that you can generate in test environment or non uh, test environment such as prod. So the data is available to you and thousands and millions of data is available to you for all those projects because it's an existing running project in your production environment. So the data is available. The input data is available. The output data is available. What do you have to do? You have to run that in seven and uh, capture it. You have to again run the same data in version uh, 11 or 10 and see if it generates the same behavior, the same output structures, the same uh, routing and transformation and delivery, so on. So you will have, you can build some in-house product, in-house tool, in-house uh, code to emulate uh, the target systems in uh, 11 or emulate the pushing of data into the 11 uh, environment and then capture the data from the 11's output. Once you capture the data from 11 output, you'll have to compare it with seven output. Understood? Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the uh, tools that you can use. The other tools that you will need is uh, the normal DevOps tools, that is uh, build automation and things like that. If, if you have a proper build automation tool, then uh, this section where you recompile and repackage your code and deploy into 11th environment will become easy. Uh, 